Okay guys, how's it going? Um, just want to do a little bit of an audio check here real quick before we get things started. So if anyone who is in here, uh, if you could just throw something in the chat, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you, Nick, for letting me know that. Um, if anything kind of comes up, obviously I'm trying to iron things out since this is going to be my first time doing this stuff on YouTube. Um, so just, you know, kind of hang with me for a little bit. I'm just going to get the uh, link sent out on Instagram just for anyone who wants to uh, check it out. So give me one quick sec. should be good okay cool so we'll just go ahead and get started and you know as people trickle in or whatever um, they will have the opportunity to uh, watch this a little bit later so before I get things started obviously I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to everyone who you know sent in their portfolios but uh, more or less thank you guys for just the support over the last couple of months um, I had a goal for Instagram to hopefully hit 10,000 uh, prior to the beginning of the new year, which I was like 10 days late on. Um, so, you know, I, I got there eventually. So that, that was kind of the goal. Um, I also was pushing pretty hard to try and, you know, make content for my YouTube video. And, and for that one, um, my goal initially started out at hopefully hitting a thousand before the year ended. And I think we more than doubled that at like 2,300. So, you know, as a thank you guys, um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of take an opportunity to, to give back to the community a little bit, offer some more insight. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for, you know, the questions you guys sent, the portfolios, uh, so I just wanted to go ahead and preface everything with that. <clears throat> First thing I wanted to do before uh, we get into the portfolio review is just say, I don't know how long this stream's going to go. Um, I'm free all day. So, you know, this could go an hour. This could potentially go two hours. I'll just kind of pace it out to see how I'm feeling after about an hour. Uh, I might be, you know, my, my, my voice might be a little bit tired. Who knows? So we'll just kind of play it by ear. I do want to make this thing, this a little bit more of a regular thing, hopefully, uh, maybe like doing Q&As once a month or something like that. I think it would be a, a good opportunity to answer people, answer people's questions and hopefully just, you know, offer a little bit of insight into what I do uh, as a character artist, how to get into the game industry, how I got my foot in the door and, and things like that, you know, just... Um, another avenue for people to, to kind of gain some insight into the game industry. Um, so uh, I had asked for questions to be sent along with your portfolios. So I did have a list of questions that I was gonna run through before I get started on the actual um, portfolio review. These are all just things that, uh, some of them are a little bit more generic I just wanted to knock them out real quick. And then I also had more that were pertaining to portfolio in particular. So to get things started, um, the first question that I had was, how long did it take you to make the alien? So uh, the piece in particular that they're talking about is this piece. Um, I did this piece as a collab with Marco. Um, I was responsible for the high poly and he was responsible for the texturing. And he did a couple of these different renders. Like I, I did this one and... Uh, this turntable but he had done ones like this so this was a collab between the both of us um the model for this i actually started a long time ago it was a piece that i uh picked up um 
probably maybe a year and a half ago, I just kind of found a concept by Rob Bliss that I really liked. I had always wanted to do like a Xenomorph or something, and, and I really loved the designs that he had done for Alien Covenant. Uh, so that was kind of where I chose the idea to go with. And um, so I started this about a year ago. It was on and off, and, and it was one of those pieces that like I would sculpt in my free time whenever I had an opportunity to, to you know put some work into it. Um, so it's kind of a skewed image, but I would say in total, the sculpting probably took maybe like work weeks. I would say maybe like two-ish weeks, maybe a little bit more. It wasn't super long, but that's just because it was primarily anatomy and dealing with primary and secondary and tertiary forms. So it wasn't super heavy in terms of how long it took. And I kind of just noodled on it for a while. Um, you know, I went back and forth on a bunch of different things. So uh, how long do you take on a personal project? This kind of goes hand in hand with this. Um, it really just depends. Uh, this one was probably on the shorter end of projects that I've had. Um, I've had projects that I've taken about two months on. I've had projects that I've taken longer. It really just depends on how much time I have free and available. So um, it, it can definitely range, especially when you have a full-time job. It's kind of hard to gauge that fact. Uh, so I would say I usually put maybe an hour to two hours a day um, on in doing personal work. So that, that's kind of what I like to do. I like to, because of the way my schedule works, I usually do about an hour before work and an hour after work. Uh, for a long time, I used to wake up at like 5.30 in the morning and do like an hour and a half of work before my wife got up and then we'd go to the gym and kind of get our day started. So I just like to find time where I can carve that in. Um, but in terms of how long each project takes, I would use like a good gauge of about maybe like two to three months on a full project. Um, again, that's also kind of skewed depending on like the style and if it's just a bust, like this character was a bust and this took less time than, uh, some of these other things did. Um, okay. So what is your workflow? Do I start in ZBrush or do I start in Maya? Uh, I start in ZBrush. Um, I very rarely touch Maya until I get to like retopology. Um, I've kind of aimed towards potentially just keeping my workflow primarily inside uh, of ZBrush as much as I can and I'll use things like ZModeler. If I do need to make like a quick asset like uh, for Walker for example on Back for Blood, some of this stuff was a little bit easier to knock out inside Maya so that was where I did it. Um, it really just depends on what's going to give me the quickest result. Usually I try to go for the quickest route with the uh, best efficiency. Um, the other big question that I get is that I got was where do I render? Um, the two places that I primarily render are Marmoset Toolbag, uh, which for example, this character was in Marmoset Toolbag, and the other one was Unreal. Uh, I don't do Unreal very often for personal work. Like I did a revision of this character in um, Unreal, but that was just to do a side-by-side -side comparison of Marmoset to Unreal uh, and to just get my feet a little bit wet and, and just make sure I was up to date on my workflows for UE5. Um, so the other one for game production, I all of these characters were done in Unreal. So cool. So now that we got those generic questions out of the way, uh, we're going to start talking about some portfolio questions. Do game companies have grooming artists and which artists get paid more, games or film? So uh, there are specific studios that'll have a grooming artist that'll do hair cards. It just depends. For Back for Blood, we contracted out a lot of our hair assets. Um, in terms of who gets paid more, film or games, I don't know. Um, the best place to look for that is probably somewhere like Glassdoor. I don't really know what you make in film, so I'm not, I'm not a good indicator on that. Uh, the next question, how to become a better character artist? This is a tricky one. Uh, what constitutes getting better for me i like to say that the way that i've gotten better is just constantly doing characters um and with each character i try to pick something 
that I can potentially learn from the project. So each individual character that I do is a learning experience. So, uh, you know, with with this character, hair was a, a an area that I wanted to kind of push forward. Um, this character was a lot of anatomy and, you know, just more creature work. Um, these ones were a little bit more pushing myself in stylization. These were pushing myself in hand painted. So it kind of just depends. That's usually how I like to get better, um, practicing the fundamentals, my color, different things like that. Um, what should I be focusing on if I want to be a AAA artist at somewhere like Turtle Rock or Naughty Dog? Uh, the things that you should be focusing on is the, well, first and foremost, um, Naughty Dog and Turtle Rock have two different styles. Naughty Dog is, is much more in a realistic stylization, whereas, uh, like, at Turtle Rock, we're a little bit more on the um, stylized proportions and kind of exaggerated colors and color blocking and things like that. So we're not quite as realistic as somewhere like Naughty Dog. So that's the first thing that I would take into consideration. And this, this kind of is just going to be a general theme for your portfolios. Take into consideration where you want to work. Um, if you want to work at somewhere like Naughty Dog, your portfolio should reflect that. You should have characters that are realistic looking. They look like they're very grounded in reality. If you want to work at somewhere like Blizzard, you should have characters in your portfolio that are hand-painted or on the stylized side of things. Um, for me, for example, you can tell I kind of have a range of characters, but that's just because uh, I, as you you know get into the industry, it's a little bit easier to pick and choose what you want to make and what you don't want to make. So for myself, um, I like to try different things. So that's kind of where the hand-painted stuff comes into. This is just like kind of carving out my own style of hand-painted. Um, but I also like to do realistic stuff and stylized stuff. So you can definitely... Uh, you know, grow and fluctuate between what you want to do. Um, but that's how I would say if, if you want to be a character artist in one of those studios, really orient your style towards what they do. Um, so I feel like I'm lacking in certain departments like hair cards. Uh, should I spend more time on characters as a whole or should I spend time on cards individually? So I think that both of those are great ways to go about it. Um, uh, usually if you're going to make a character, pick a character that has hair um, as a way to kind of tackle both things. That's what I like to do is if there's one specific thing that I'm trying to tackle, I try to pick a character that I can tackle that in um, so I can learn while also kind of creating a full character for my portfolio. Um, are uh, hair cards important for character artists or will it be passed to a hair artist? So that just kind of depends. Um, it depends. The studio depends on the team for, like I said, for Back for Blood, we outsourced our hair. Um, but there, there are people that will do it for their characters. It really just depends on the production environment and what they want. Uh, the next question, do you think art tests should only be for young artists and not for seniors? It's exhausting and a waste of time. Um, so yeah, that's an unfortunate reality about the game industry. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that they have the quality bar that they need to hit to get into a AAA studio, but unfortunately they're kind of missing, um, missing that bar a little bit. So that's usually what an art test is to gauge is to see where you're at. Yes, they're hard and, uh, it, it kind of is a little bit tricky in terms of, um, getting them done in a timely manner, usually because you have the fact of two weeks of knocking out a character, maybe a little bit longer, and that can very easily uh, take a toll on you, you know, doing a full-time job, then getting off work and having to work on a full character, and with the stress of also making a full character, it's it's definitely a little bit intense. Um, so unfortunately, it is a reality. I have only taken one art test uh, before, and it was for a base level character art position. In terms of the senior positions, um, so at Turtle Rock, I got promoted to senior, um, and after leaving where I'm headed next, I'm headed into a senior position as well. So I didn't have to take an art test at Turtle Rock or into this next position. So it just kind of depends. Uh, a lot of the places that are going to offer art tests are going to be places that are a little bit more um, 
I guess, bigger name studios like Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Blizzard, a lot of those studios where they have thousands and thousands of applicants, that's where you're going to end up seeing a lot of people uh, applying and that's where art tests are going to come into play. Which if you're curious about art tests, this uh, this piece was done for ArtStation Learning and I kind of go over my process of making a character from start to finish and some of the things that you should expect in an art test. Um, so maybe you'll find some some more useful information in there. Okay, uh, any advice if uh, you want to have experience doing character design in the game industry? So I'm not a character designer, so um, I don't necessarily have the most insight. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to say that I can really comment on that. If your question was meant to be character artist, um, I think that the best place that you can gain experience is doing projects in your free time, doing characters uh, constantly. That's that's really how you ultimately get in, is if you can make a character from start to finish and you can show um, sculpting, topology, texturing, UV mapping, uh, and some of the look development, you are putting yourself in a good position. The next part that is kind of secondary to that well i mean they kind of go hand in hand but is having characters that match the quality bar that you are trying to meet so you want to have characters that match the bar of the studio where you're applying um okay so i'm a vfx uh modeler and want to know the requirements to be a character artist so i think i kind of just touched on that um you know knowing how to make a character from start to finish how to um do your textures how to do your uv maps how to uh shade your model once it's inside en the engine those are going to be the things that you should know um okay how to find studios that suit my style and how to apply to studios in foreign countries so how to find studios that suit your style um that's really just up to you and that really comes down to what you like to do um you should be tailoring your portfolio to where you want to work. So if, like I said earlier, if you want to work at somewhere like Blizzard, you should be making hand-painted work all the time. That should be what your portfolio consists of. Because, for example, if I sent my portfolio over to Blizzard and I'm like, hey, I want to work on World of Warcraft, they're going to see my portfolio and they're going to be like, that that doesn't really line up with what you're showing us. So we're not going to take the chance that you could potentially do hand-painted work. Um, so in, as in, in terms of uh, applying to foreign countries, a lot of studios, depending on how good you are and if they want to hire you, they can apply for a work visa. Um, I unfortunately have never gone through that process, so I don't have a ton of insight, but I do know people that have come from different countries and that I've worked with that uh, are from all over the world and they were able to do it. So I think it's just really about finding a studio, applying, and see if they can sponsor your work visa. Um, okay, how do you show your renders and show your work? So kind of like I said, uh, I tend to show my work inside Marmoset and um, Unreal. I, I like to keep things pretty simple. I have a, a three-point light setup that I usually set up for all my characters just to present them in good light. And that's something that I'll talk about a little bit more as we uh, hopefully go through some of these portfolios. Um, and th the last question before we get started is, how do you make a portfolio? So I've kind of touched on this. You want to be making a portfolio that shows that you want to be a character artist, um, which, uh, you know, I, I may be not the best example for this because if you look through my portfolio i do have some environment and prop pieces i did these things before i started at turtle rock as a character artist um i had this character and this character and this character in my portfolio and those were ultimately what got me a job as a character artist but i did have uh this environment and these props that i had done for decogon so um De I, I wouldn't advise that if you are trying to be a character artist and you have like multiple props and environments and some concept drawings in there i wouldn't do that remove your concept drawings remove your environments and just have characters in there like i said i'm a bad example of this but it, it was because i was working for decogon at the time um doing props for them and I felt like it was a good opportunity. I could remove some of this stuff that's in my portfolio because it's it's outdated, like this character and this character. They're both outdated and don't necessarily reflect uh, my skill at this point. But at this point, you know, you see these first couple of rows and you can 
kind of get the gist and you you know hopefully at that point they haven't scrolled down this far but um I could definitely do some cleanup in my portfolio. So um, yeah, that's usually how I would say to make a good portfolio. If you wanna be a character artist, show just characters. Make sure that those characters are tailored to where you wanna work. Um, and in those character pieces, things that you should show. Uh, so I, I'm very heavy on presenting your work with multiple renders, showing as much information as possible and the reason for that is because it leaves nothing up to question. Um, if someone clicked on this character, I don't think that they're going to go, oh, well, maybe we should send him an art test because at this point I've provided enough information of how I made the character that it shouldn't even come into question. I've showed something like a breakdown of my process and how I was able to iterate over time and how I could do that in a production setting. So this is things that are good to show to a potential employer is how you work over time, how you correct your mistakes and how you get better. So um, another thing that I like to make sure I present is images of the front, images of the back. Um, one big thing is presenting your character in a pose presenting your character like this can be fine um, it gives me enough information to look at but this is a lot more interesting than just a generic t pose on this character i did more work than i should have because i wanted to do the entire undersuit as well so i presented that work um, i show some of the shader stuff in here show some of the eyes that i made um, let's see some close-ups of the detail that I was able to capture and some of the skin detail, some more skin work, some other shots, a breakdown of my textures and how they relate to my materials, um, a process of sculpting and how the model went from a block out to final um, high poly, the high poly model and just a couple of additional renders. And then on top of that, for this project, it was a little bit different because I presented the model also in Unreal. But for another uh, piece here, I provided a couple of additional shots, some more turnarounds, how the model looks in a clay render, some unposed turnarounds. Again, some more of the information that I had sculpted, some process, some more process, breakdowns of textures, um, the high poly sculpt, and a turnaround of the high poly. So the more information that you can present in an image, the better. Um, that's also another thing that I would suggest is when you're making your characters, you wanna make sure that they are completed. I'm not a huge fan of seeing things like this, which this was because our engine was a little bit more proprietary, but there was enough presentation that I felt like I put into this character that it didn't just look like a ZBrush screenshot. Don't do ZBrush screenshots. They're they're fine, they're nice to see on things like Instagram, but it just kind of presents itself as an unfinished piece. So at the the least you can do is take it to a render engine, present it in full lighting, and, and just give as much information about the model as you possibly can. A ZBrush screenshot kind of reads as you didn't want to finish it you just sculpted something and then we're like here show it which is is fine but the problem with that is you spent all this time sculpting a character you might as well take it to completion and show it in its finality you might as well take it to a point where you're presenting your work at the as the as the best work you possibly can so that's how i would say to make a portfolio um so at this point sorry i've kind of talked for like 23 minutes straight so uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into looking at portfolios now. So hopefully you guys are all still hanging in here. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. In terms of extra portfolios that we're going to look at, um, if you didn't send it into the link, I'm, I'm probably not going to take a look at it just because um, I, I have all of these portfolios and, you know, that I, I don't know if I'm going to make it to all these portfolios. I'm going to try to, but like I said, hopefully in the future we'll, we'll do this again here um, pretty soon. So let's get started. So this is the first uh, portfolio that I received. Um, this is from Nick. So right off the bat, uh, I think what's really good about your portfolio, Nick, is you have all completed pieces. That's, that's a really good thing to see. Um, so your Jaguar good anatomy study um, showing that you're working in pose this is really good to see uh, some more anatomy work this is a good anatomy sculpt 
Um, let's see. Yep, this looks good. Okay, I think. Okay, cool. So, so this is an interesting sculpt. The only thing that I would suggest for this piece is um, showing a little bit more information on it because right now there's just this one image. So if this, you know, I would like to see if this game has a low poly to it, if uh, I can see like some of your texture breakdown information. Um, but oh, I mean, overall, you know, you're, you're kind of hitting the mark, you're posing your characters, you're doing things, you're showing your models, which is really cool. They're all textured. Um, okay with this one cool same thing yeah i would just show more images of these to provide breakdowns if and that being said if a character you make a character and he doesn't necessarily have good topology good things like that you don't have to show that stuff in every single piece but i would recommend showing it in enough to show to me that you can create a character that you're you're not just like sculpting all this in super super high poly and then um you know you're just running a quick z remesh on it you're z unwrapping it and then you're just throwing it into an engine and and just throwing really high poly textures or a high uh resolution textures on it and so on and so forth i just want to see that you can also work in a game environment if that's where you're focused on Okay, cool. Yeah, this is another good one. Good presentation. Good job here. Cool. Yeah, this is information that I like to see. Nice job here. I'm assuming that this is a breakup of your texture set. You provided some information over here. Okay, cool. Yeah, this is nice. This is good to see how you broke down your textures, how many texture sets you used and things like that. Um, let's see. Okay cool another pose yeah it's good to see that you're making all of these characters in poses that's that's something that i like to see um it shows that you're putting a lot of effort into your work seeing the high poly seeing the under anatomy sculpting close up to the assets cool uv breakdowns okay cool Okay, cool. So overall, really nice job, Nick. Um, if I was to offer a couple of things in terms of feedback, I think the biggest thing is maybe just a little bit more work on your lighting would help, um, especially with this character, because there's a lot of grays going on, a gray background, the gray armor. Um, it, it just, you, you want to kind of emphasize the shape of the character and the silhouette so that it pops out from the background a little bit more. So that's, that's one thing that I would recommend um is is just maybe a little bit of work on the lighting also one thing that i notice between your characters is um let's see okay yeah so so if i was to offer one spot to continue to just refine a little bit more it would probably be the faces um just in terms of like the proportions the eyes feel a little bit small on some of the characters so you know you might i would just go ahead and check your proportions just a tad bit more to to make sure that these are scaled up to the correct uh size that they should be on the face um but yeah overall really good presentation good work um i think that you you definitely did a good job with a lot of these characters i think you you hit a lot of the qualities that i like to see on my uh, portfolio reviews so really nice job with that um okay let's jump on to the next one okay cool this one also um really good, right off the bat really good job seeing just a lot of different stuff uh in terms of presentation there's all of these characters have a presentation to them so nice job doing that okay oh, oops Skipped a little bit too quickly. This is cool. This is interesting. Okay. There's a concept. So it's it's good to see the concept as well if you don't uh, link it to over here. Um, it gives a, a really nice um, 
bit of information as to what you're trying to hit, what the original design looks like. This is good to see a nice breakdown on, you know, your your topology, your hair and all that stuff. Okay, cool, your maps, that's good. Cool. Okay, so for this piece, the one uh, bit of information that I would suggest is on some of these shots like this one, there's so much white in the background and things are kind of just looking a little bit blown out. Um, so I would do a little bit of work also on just your overall presentation. Same same advice that I offered to Nick. There's a lot of gray, um, a lot of white. And so right now my eyes being drawn more to over here and to right here than it is to the full character. So just a little bit of work on the presentation I think would help with this one. Um, okay. Let's see. Cool, very interesting. Yeah, it's really nice to see all of these pieces that have poses in them and stuff. Um, it just it kind of just tells me that you have uh, an appreciation for your work, which is really good to see. You you put a lot of time and effort into it. This is cool. Yeah, this is a really nice like dynamic pose. I like what you did here. Um, in terms of this piece, one one little bit of advice that I would offer is uh, just maybe a little bit more attention to your material definitions down on this pedestal. Uh, it's kind of a small thing, but right now, it, I'm not really sure how to read the material. I know it's supposed to read as stone, so I think it could just use a little bit more um, tweaking and polishing because it's, it's kind of matching some of the materials in the body. Okay, let's see. Hey, Marco. What's up, man? Glad to see you could stop in. Um, so... Oh, okay, so this was another piece that uh, I saw, and and this kind of seems like this this piece has a, um, something that I really do like to see. I, I kind of just commented on some material definition between the rock and stuff, but I feel like this piece has a lot of really interesting materials. Um, one thing I would try to do with this piece is just hone in a little bit closer to what the material is supposed to read as. So, um, like for example, kind of this like drape. Uh, let's see if I can find a better shot. This like draped cloth. Um, it, it's not necessarily showing the same kind of sheen and same with this this shoulder cloth as well. It looks good. I think it's just missing a couple of elements of what uh, is encapsulated in cloth. So like some of that fuzz element. Um, let's see. Okay. Good to see the sculpts. Okay, cool. And so um, one thing that I'm noticing just with a couple of these different characters is, again, it's going to be the face and um, the the skulls and the faces are going to be the most difficult thing to make. Uh, and, and right here is a good example of just an area that you could potentially um, w refine a little bit further to improve it. Is So right now from this three quarters angle, you're just getting a very straight line, which if you look at a skull, uh, there should be kind of this break between the eyebrow into back in towards the corner of the eye and then coming out from the... Uh, the cheekbone right here um, and so right now you have a very flat line which this kind of seems like something that's pretty consistent through most of your facial sculpts so that's just an area you can see it right here as well um, which this one's a little bit more flat on um, but I do think that's just an area that you might be able to to work on a little bit more is going to be the heads uh, this is good to see hair is something that majority of people that I know don't like to do um, so being able to show that you can do hair and if you're the type of person that wants to present yourself as a hair artist that's a, a great route to go because there's always people looking for hair artists so you can truly carve out your niche if you specialize in hair um, so good breakdown some good volumes cool yeah so I think overall um, you have a lot of good stuff here uh, it's nice to see all of your characters are finished and finalized you got uh, poses in them you got lighting in them um, I think just on, on a fundamental level there's there's some more work that we can do on the face to just help with the structure and and emphasize that face a little bit more but I definitely think a lot of this stuff is headed in the right direction so nice job with that so let's see so the next one okay cool 
Um, so I believe that I looked at your portfolio on your Instagram. Uh, and this kind of seems like the work that you might be most interested in is this this statue uh, 3D collectible kind of work, which if that's the case, that's awesome. The one thing that I would recommend is if that's the that's the route that you're headed down, you want to try and make all of your pieces this. So I think that this study also works. You could potentially even put arms into this study and pose it up and, and do kind of the same treatment as the collectible statue to to kind of drive that point home. Uh, this piece does stand out as potentially like a real-time character piece. Um, so if that is something that interests you, you know, th this advice is more just to kind of guide you in a direction as I've kind of hit on multiple times, if you want to work somewhere particular, just make sure that your portfolio reflects that. So if it is games, then game characters is what you should be presenting. If it's statues and collectibles, that style of statue and collectible is what you're going to want to be presenting. So, okay, cool. So yeah, overall, I think there's a lot of good stuff in this sculpt. Um... I think right now the, what would really help this piece uh, just a little bit further is the lighting. So right now there's just like a lot of red going on that's being cast over on this side. So we're not really able to um, see a lot of the sculpted volumes. So what I would look into is a three-point lighting setup. Look at um, just pointing a good, uh, placing a good point light and a rim light and a fill light that's going to kind of fill in this area. You have a hint of it right now, but because the light is... Is so red um, it's kind of making the skin look like it's glowing more than it should so it looks like the subsurface scattering is a little bit too heavy on the face because of what I'm assuming is the lighting so so I think that's just overall something that you can um, do to this piece that would help with it um, but yeah overall I think again good stuff so far everyone's done some really good stuff so we'll jump on to the next one okay cool Hmm, this is interesting. Uh, project I work on a while ago. Uh, hmm, cool. Okay, this is an interesting scene. Interesting. Yeah, I'd be interested to know um, if like this stuff was done in uh, Marvelous or how, how this is accomplished. Um, cool. Yeah, this is some good detail on these. Looks like you have a rig attached to it. Yeah, this is this is some cool stuff. And then there's a like really interesting final presentation to it. Um, the one thing that I would uh, suggest if if you really wanted to um, show this as a character piece, uh, then what I would do is I would present more information around the characters, which I think you've provided a, a good amount just between the sculpt and this rig, but start to show maybe some of the texture sets and um some of the final textures i think would help but overall yeah this is this is interesting and cool okay let's see okay okay cool so with this piece um one so hand studies are really good it's it's if you can't sculpt hands um uh, you're going to be in for a rude awakening uh, as a character artist hands I think are probably the second most important aspect of a character to face there's a lot of gesture which looks like you're trying to capture here um, and so what I would recommend for this piece is if you want to study hands I would work on refining your shapes a little bit more uh, right now things are feeling just kind of a little bit more on the like unsculpted part like you know, you kind of have these unetched in fingernails. And um, if you look at hands and study hands, hands have a very interesting rhythm to them and a lot of like kind of dips to them that really help sell a lot of the character. And right here, usually like along the knuckle is where you start to see it. So right here is is kind of where I'm missing some of that stuff is it's kind of like knuckle, hump, hump whereas like you could start to carve in a little bit more shape and silhouette to those um let's see uh in terms of lighting i think you could also work on the lighting just for these a little bit better right now you're just getting a very harsh 
coverage of light so you're not seeing the forms that's another thing that I, I'll probably comment on some more people's work is lighting is really going to help make a believable render as well as um, selling some of the sculpting work that you did because right now a lot of this palm area doesn't actually have or it's not showing a lot of the sculpted forms that you would have in here kind of the nuanced like pads of the hands you're, you're really only getting a lot of shading in this area um, this this image uh, I would probably drop this image because of the fact that like I can tell what it is but it's a little bit hard to tell what's going on um, you, you get some good subsurface scattering and stuff like that but I can't tell what's going on on the underside of the hand so to allevi alleviate that I would put in a rim light so that you could sculpt out that shape from the the harsh contrast of the background um, and I think that that would help that piece um here is this sculpt cool yeah this is this looks pretty good um some interesting textures and stuff let's see so i'm not sure if this is in what this was rendered in i think uh to help this piece a little bit more what i would really focus on is just your material reads um so right now the all of your materials are kind of feeling like they're made of the same uh, same material and that that again that's a very common thing that I see with a lot of people is they they don't have much separation between the materials that they're making and that's incredibly important to have your metal read as metal and your leather read as leather and then your skin read as skin would really help this piece um, it would allow you know kind of a separation or a contrast between each individual element to help push the piece a little bit further um So, the, okay, so this is, uh, an, I, I guess, a theme that I'm sort of noticing in your work is um, you like dark and moody renders, which is cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's good to see that you also presented with just a little bit uh, more clear picture of what the character was going to look like. Um, this image, I would continue to just refine the lighting a little bit more. You do just lose a lot of information down in this bottom part of the render. And you could, right now, the brightest value is right here, which is good, but I would want to illuminate this face just a little bit more as that's the focal point. The cigarette is part of the focal point, but you really want to emphasize the face. So just drawing a little bit more light to that would help um okay cool so yeah overall good stuff um hopefully that was some stuff that you can take away from some of that feedback and things that might help um let's see okay cool prop artist um so right off the bat this is good to see you you state in the title you want to be a prop artist and all three of these things uh convince me of that fact they all look like they're props so we'll look at this one So this was done for a mentorship. Cool. Yeah, this is this is a, a really good model. Um, really high quality, a lot of interesting detail. Cool. Yeah, nice to see some of this uh, this decorative stuff that you'd sculpted out. Some of this information on the marvelous side. Cool. So the one thing that I would suggest for this piece um, is take it to completion. I think that you know this this is a really good piece it's really really well done um, a lot of really cool detail the the next step to pushing it would just be to make a low poly off of it uh, that can be used in a game environment and do the uvs on it throw textures on it and throw a good lighting on it and i think that this would be a really awesome piece to see finalized so that's what i would suggest for this piece i think this piece is really really well done um just adding in that that next level would help push it a little bit further um let's see okay cool again some cool detail yeah this sculpted stuff is really good 
Okay, cool. So with this piece, um, this this you know looks really good. One thing that's really hard about renders uh, of this nature, like swords or guns or things like that, is there's a lot of wasted space in your final renders. So what I would suggest is maybe finding someone who's presented something like a sword and just kind of get more ideas of how they presented it um, as opposed to just the side angle. I think this is good information to have. But uh, some more renders of this nature where you're really focused on like this nuanced detail that you put in, I think could really, really uh, improve just some of the renders. Um, and another thing that I do think could use a little bit of refinement for this piece is same same as I said before uh, is material definition. Right now, there's not much of a distinction between your metals to your cloth to kind of this bezel that's on the edge of the blade. Um, so what it looks like you're missing, especially in your metals, there it doesn't seem to be like it's catching too much light like a metal would. So I would really work on that, and I think it would help both of these sections to um, feel a little bit more realistic and grounded. Uh, for the wood, um, let me see, is there another angle? So the wood, it, kind of the same thing. It's missing an element of roughness to it. It feels like it's more on the plastic side. So part of the reason for that is like you have the base texture, which is good, but your highlights that you're getting are, there's no breakup in them. And if you look at a wood surface, there is like notches of grain that goes across it. There's little scratches and indents. So adding things like that would really help sell the texture of this wood. Um, overall good piece I just think that the materials could could use a little bit of extra love as well as maybe uh, some some revisions to the lighting on some of these to help kind of like accentuate it from the background and and emphasize a lot of these materials um, okay so let's see okay these guitars Okay, cool. Yeah, so so this uh, this is a good example of some good material reads right off the bat. All this stuff, this this looks like I would expect a guitar to look. So good job with that. Um, yeah, good metals. Some some of this good wood backboard. Um, let's see. So it does right here down here on these knobs. It does look like you're losing a little bit of detail uh, from your normal map. So I would check that out. Um, some of the shapes, it's kind of like falling apart in terms of what the shape's supposed to be. Um, and it might be because of the how like mirror-like you have the materials down here. So I would tweak those a little bit more and see if you could uh, get a better result off of those. This is good information to see. Um, cool. Yeah, and so I think that um, these are headed in the right direction by for, for the material comment, um, I would just work a little bit more on these knobs. And the only other thing that I might suggest is is maybe a little bit of a darker background. Um, here you have these turntables and you're getting these like bright hot spots that can be distracting from the model. So uh, I think that that might help those a little bit. But yeah, overall, um, really good. I would definitely take this piece to, to completion to the same quality as these, and I think you, you're definitely headed in the right direction. This is a really good piece, um, by far your strongest. So uh, take that to the next level, and I think you have a really good portfolio for you. Um, okay, I'm going to take like a five-second break and get a drink of water, because uh, now at this point I've been talking for like 50 minutes straight, so um, things are good, but just need a little bit of water. Okay. Hey, Marcos. Um, so I stated this before. Uh, unfortunately, we have a ton of portfolios to get through. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through all of them, but I wanted to try. We'll see how far we get. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not going to accept any more portfolios for this review. Uh, <clears throat> but in the future, uh, you can keep an eye out. I do plan to do another one. Um, sometime soon so if you're interested in that keep an eye out on my social media i'll post about it and i'll open up a a link to um submit your portfolios too so okay okay cool character and visualization artist okay so one thing that i would recommend and again i've kind of, I've kind of harped on this a couple of times um 
when making a portfolio, you should determine where you want to work. Uh, because that's going to influence what goes in it and what you're making. So if you want to work at Naughty Dog, making realistic stuff. If you want to work at Blizzard doing environments, your portfolio should reflect that. It should be stylized environments. Right here, there is a little bit of a mixed message. And I think that part of this potentially stems from either what you're doing now. Uh, maybe you're working in visualization at a, at a, excuse me, at a firm or something, um, and so this is, you know, what you make on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're like, well, this is good work, which I understand uh, prior to working at Turtle Rock, I worked at Northrop Grumman and I was doing environments there. So it, it kind of found its way into my portfolio. But I would, if, if you really want to work in characters, I would maybe put this stuff somewhere else um, just so that it isn't distracting from the overall image. Not, this stuff isn't bad. They're both good quality pieces. It just kind of detracts from where you're wanting to go. So just keep that in mind when you're putting stuff in there. Ultimately, it's up to you whether you want to keep it or not. Um, but just know that that can be something a recruiter will look at. They'll be like, well, do you want to be an environment artist or do you want to be a character artist? I'm kind of confused on the messaging of it. Um, so let's look at this. Okay, cool. Cool, a lot of images, nice breakdown there. Good to see your hair cards. You can see your ZBrush stuff, an interesting uh, final render. Uh, for this final render, I think it's fine that you keep this. The only thing that I would suggest for it is um, I work in Viz and one. Okay, cool. So kind of what I thought. Like I said, I did the same thing. Um, I worked as an environment artist for a, a military contractor for the government. Um, and so I, I did mostly environment work there. And I wanted to be a character artist. But some of that environment art kind of found its way into my portfolio because for a little while I was doing that full time with them. And, you know, so, so like I said, take it with a grain of salt. Just know that that is something that could come up. Um, if you really want to specialize in characters, I would keep characters the main spotlight. Um, so, yeah. Um, but with this render, this is a cool, interesting render. The, the only thing I would suggest is maybe just brightening it a little bit uh, in terms of the background. It, it's not super vivid in terms of the silhouette that it's catching so you just want to make sure that you really emphasize that and even all the way down here um just so it pops but that that's just a small little critique um yeah so good information here on this piece um it looks like you're going for kind of like an old rustic feel the the biggest thing that i noticed that could use a little bit of improvement there there's two things one is just the overall presentation right now it looks like you have a light that's just coming from where the camera's coming from so everything's illuminated so you aren't really casting much in terms of <clears throat> in terms of shadows um and helping to sell the forms you're you're just kind of getting all of the information at once so i would work a little bit on your presentation of lighting and again i stick to just a basic three-point lighting because it helps to uh accentuate the forms um, you can pop it off of the background and it, it's just a tried and true method. So uh, that's what I like to do. Maybe you like to do like a top down light or something like that. That's uh, find something that you like, but you just want to help yourself uh, and not make the image quite so flat. You want to get some of those shadows in there to help define the forms that you sculpted. Um, the other thing that I would recommend is right now, uh, the materials could use a little bit of work. I'm assuming that like these hand pieces, they're meant to be cloth. Um, and there's also supposed to be like some of this leather on top right now. It's, it, there isn't much distinction between the two materials and same with even like this rusted, all the rusted pieces, it's very heavy on the rusting. So if you have a reference that you're keying off of, that's fine. Um, but I would just work a little bit more on defining that material, maybe adding in little spots of light, like how up here you have your mask, having little spots of what the original metal or material was made out of coming through so it can kind of help inform the material that you're trying to capture. With the values that you have and it being rust, it can kind of pre be perceived as like maybe rock 
or um, something that isn't necessarily made of metal. So that's just something that I would keep in mind uh, moving forward and, and if you want to go back and make any revisions to this piece as well. Um, let's see. Okay, cool. Yeah, this one this one has some good material definitions. Um, I think your lighting on this one's definitely a lot better. Okay. Cool. Yeah, for this piece, I would just make sure to add in some of the breakdown information. Um, also, for for this this final uh, hero render, um, right now your values are a little bit dark, so I would try to emphasize the light up top so that we're drawing a little bit more focus to the face and this region as, you know, like I said, faces are where everyone wants to look. Right now, all of the values are kind of feeling a little bit in the same direction. So if you can emphasize uh, lighting in this area just a little bit more, I think it would draw the viewer to this section of the character as opposed to like, I, my eye doesn't know where to look right away. Um, it can kind of look wherever, but I want it to look at the face. So, okay, this next one. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Cool. Yeah, so so same thing with this piece. Um, I would just work a little bit more on your material definitions as well as the lighting to kind of help sell those materials. Um, so yeah, I think that that would help. Uh, again, this is good to see some information, your texture sets. This is all good to see. Um, cool. Uh, this image, I would probably get rid of this image. It, it doesn't add too much to the presentation. Um, it, that That's also one thing that I would note about everyone's portfolios is be brutally honest with what you include in it and what you don't. Um, sometimes less is more. Sometimes the project quantifies showing renders, but at the end of the day, some renders may potentially hamper what you're trying to present. And I think that this is a render that it, it's not really adding much to the project. So I would go ahead and remove it. Um, but yeah, overall, Michael, really good job. Some really cool stuff. Um, I, I think you're, you're headed in a good direction. I would just work some more on your materials as well as your lighting and presentation. But I think you got a couple of good characters in here um, that are completed which is good to see you're showing you know all of the processes of making a game character which is a strong thing to have so okay cool so this next one let's see so right off the bat um i kind of already mentioned this this is something that i don't necessarily like to see in portfolios uh, because right now they both kind of feel unfinished. This is good to have an anatomy study, um, but the problem with it is it, it doesn't feel completed. It just feels like ZBrush screenshots, which I know that there are some people in the 3D industry that present their work this way. The big difference is they've spent years refining how they present it, so there is like an elegance to how they present their ZBrush sculpts. When you're trying to get a job as a character artist, this doesn't really scream too much uh, as, oh, I can complete a piece. It just shows like, oh, well, I did a sculpt and kind of did what I needed to to just show it off. But you put a lot of work into this, so take it a little bit further and put it inside of a render engine. Um whatever that engine may be but just add a little bit of light to it help sell your forms this the zbrush viewport doesn't really do a good job of presenting shadows um so that's why i would recommend it this this doesn't look super great because of the rendering uh so i think overall it would help um, let's see. So we'll take a look at your other one. So the, the strongest piece that you have in your portfolio, and, and I took a look at this one a little bit earlier, is this one. Um, the modeling for it, I don't know if the modeling image is in it in here. I think I saw the modeling image, uh, in maybe on your Instagram, um, looked good. I think that's an image that you should show. Uh, for this, these wireframes, they're good information to see. Um, one thing that's a little bit just like kind of awkward about this character is like this kind of seating position. He feels 
like super off balanced um like he's gonna just tumble over onto his back so that's something that i would take note of like for future projects is you know um think about how the character's posed like does he feel unbalanced does he feel can i stand like this because if you can't stand like that then it kind of breaks that realm of realism that you want to capture into the pose um in terms of this character i think the overall what this care this piece could use um i think it's good it's a final presentation i think that some of the material definition is something that uh could use a little bit of work all of the metals kind of feel like they're the same and there's also just this level of grunge and noise that's all over the model um this is a very common thing when people start to use something like substance painter is they put the grunge and the grime in everywhere and don't take the time to go in and like knock it away so like right here on this little gear you can see all of this is just dust and even down here there you didn't go in and like knock some of that back so be a little bit more intentional with how that dust buildup happens and where it's happening adding an extra paint layer in just going in and you know reducing all the stuff in this area but keeping it down here in some of these secluded areas that it would collect in would help um let's see okay cool yeah again um i think that this is one of your stronger pieces as well um i do think that you could use some work on the material definitions uh this wood doesn't necessarily feel like wood it has some of the grain but the the response that it's having to the light as and and i'm not sure if this is meant to be like dirt or uh, maybe burn it's uh there there kind of isn't much of a differentiation between the two in terms of materials so i think that that could use a little bit of love um some work on the stylization character here cool um with this piece i think that this piece is definitely headed in the right direction i think the biggest thing that i would work on for this character is right now uh, a lot of the forms feel very soft which if you look at the concept everything's very chiseled there's a lot of angles and i think right now that's something that you have in certain areas but like down here the the line quality is a little bit more on the wobbly side where if you look at the chin there is a sharp line break a sharp line break sharp line break sharp line so really doing your best to capture those breaks is going to help your silhouette for your characters um when you're doing something that's stylized like this okay let's move to the next one so we still have a ton left um we've now been going for an hour um i'm feeling okay right now so we'll we'll kind of keep things rolling for a little bit but um Thank you guys for everyone that's just kind of stayed in here and listened to me ramble, you know. Uh, I, I definitely do appreciate that fact. So, um, okay, so Paco, cool. So I, I know that you had uh, tagged me in this piece, I believe, a couple of days ago, and which is good. Yeah, you, <clears throat> you watched the art test piece. Um, so right off the bat, there's a lot of good stuff going on this character. <clears throat> Um, again, I think that this is going to be the major thing that I will probably touch on on everyone's piece is just going to be the material definition of the character. Right now, there's not enough to distinguish what the materials that you're trying to create is. So, you know, between this kind of like, I'm assuming this is like a down fabric or maybe like a leather or something, it feels very similar in nature to these kind of like plastic pads that you're, you have on the shoulders. So really just working on breaking things down to a very um, simplified material. So like as if they were to come off the factory line, that's what you should start with. You should essentially create a block out for your textures and make sure that all of the materials feel and look the way that they should uh upon first viewing so like i should be able to easily look at something and say oh that's plastic that's leather like right here your leathers those look good oh uh okay did i lose you guys by chance i just got a message saying that obs disconnected Okay, looks like it was really successful. So hopefully we're still going. Can I just get a um, yes, we're still here?
Okay, cool. So glad we didn't lose uh, lose the stream. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, uh, that's how I like to work. I like to do things in a very, you know, step by step process. So I view my textures as right off the factory line. Um, I establish them. I get a good read without any scratches or dirt or anything like that. And then I go in and do a secondary pass on breakup. So like adding variation and roughness to the surface, adding color variation and starting to add some of that nuance of a material that has been existing in the real world for a while and some of the stuff that starts to collect on it and just starting to think about that process. Um, and then once I do that, then I start to go in and add in like the tertiary details like hero scratches and things like that. So that's that's the only thing I would recommend for this piece. I think that there's a lot of good stuff with it. This is good to see. I like that you had a cool presentation showing the model. The model looks pretty good. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the model looks good. I do think uh, you, you might be able to adjust a little bit of the proportions on the back of this head right here. Um, feels a little little steep but not too bad good to see your wireframe cool uh, let's see yeah so overall good job with this piece um, I think that there's just a little bit more that you can accentuate in terms of the materials and I know this is something that's a little bit hard when you have a concept that's kind of like this um, you're not getting much in terms of material reads so what i would do to help alleviate that is i would find really good reference of materials uh even if they're a little bit a little bit more exaggerated like this kind of like orange jumpsuit i would find something that looks like a jumpsuit and then i would find something that i could use as like this little hip pad and i would start to think about maybe making like a contrast between the two in terms of materials so making this jumpsuit feel very like fuzzy and this hip pad maybe like a more like rough latex rubber kind of material so that there's like this contrast between how much light the two materials are getting so right now it, you're you're um you can really help yourself with that so okay let's look at some of the other stuff okay cool so yeah i think with these pieces and this this kind of looks like the uh um how it is with a lot of these is i would take these to completion um right now you just have the 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 sculpts which is good showing that you can sculpt but just taking them to that next level getting them in the render and um you know putting on your textures your materials just to help bring them to the next level would really help as someone who like i've said, kind of you know again i'm going to keep harping on this but uh if you're trying to get into a character position for games we want to make sure that you have those skills to uv map to texture to do a low poly so being able to show that information um as opposed to just the sculpt is really really helpful okay cool so <clears throat> i took a look at this one earlier um so okay this is actually going to be something that is a useful tidbit of information for everyone most likely um but one of the most important things about putting your portfolio together is going to be your thumbnail for this portfolio there's one two three pieces where all i'm really seeing in the thumbnail is a turnaround uh, which i don't think really helps the piece um to illustrate a little bit more right now there isn't much drawing me to want to click on this one uh or these two whereas like this one i can see what i'm gonna get when i click on it so make sure you take that into consideration when you're doing your uh thumbnail because i'm much more inclined to click on this stylized portrait than i am the turnarounds um if i just saw this i don't really go oh i i'm i'm interested i want to check it out there's i can see what i'm looking at uh, enough to to kind of get an idea whereas here i'm like oh well i want to see the rest of the body i want to see all the rest of the work that he put in whereas these ones aren't necessarily drawing my attention quite as much so that's something that um for these two these three pieces i would uh address by adding in a 
different thumbnail. Um, and I think that that would draw a little bit more attention to those pieces. Um, in terms of quality and stuff, I uh, really would kind of harp the same thing that I've been touching on. Um, on first glance, a lot of these don't look like they've been through the character pipeline. They all look like they've just been sculpted and then rendered in uh, ZBrush or something like that. Um, I would take them to completion. I would I would finish them out, do the low poly, and get the textures and things on them and get real light on them. I think that that would definitely help uh, a lot of these pieces. Like this one, you you have in a render engine with, with real shadows, it looks like. So I would just do that with the rest of these pieces and just take them to completion. Same with this one. This one actually looks like it was a full character that was done. Um, okay, so this model from scratch all textures are hand painted in substance okay cool yeah so this is what i want to see for this piece uh i think what would really help it is removing the background um it's kind of pulling away attention from the focal point of the character either dimming it or removing it all together and then getting in a nice lighting setup to help sell some of these forms that you sculpted in um would really help the the character as well okay so we're still going strong um this is the front page uh, okay cool so aaron is next okay <clears throat> so aaron let's take a look at what you have here you have a lot of pieces in here which is cool to see i'm assuming uh you draw a lot of inspiration from Hussein Deba, uh, very similar presentation to what he has. So um, I can I can tell that you kind of like the portrait study. Um, I'm assuming you probably want to go a little bit more towards realism. Let's see. Cool. So right off the bat, we'll just start with your latest one. Okay, cool. Cool, this is a nice eye. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um, Aaron, what I would suggest for you is uh, Hussein is a, is a great artist and um, really has kind of carved out his niche as the guy that, you know, they go to for... For likeness sort of stuff um so if that's what you want to do that's awesome i'm not super familiar with kind of being in that sort of field so um uh, i i don't i can't offer a ton of insight as to like how to refine your characters a little bit more in that perspective but just as an overall note of one thing that i i would notice with uh that I've noticed with a lot of your characters and these faces that could use a little bit of refinement is um, just some of the proportions and how they relate to each other, especially like in this one. Um, overall, the materials look look pretty good. Um, you got some some high frequency detail on this stuff, which is good. <clears throat> but I would come back down to a more fundamental level uh, when doing your faces. <clears throat> excuse me um and i would look at just overall proportion so right now uh with with a lot of the characters that you have one thing that i notice is the size of the eyes so um they are rather small for what they should be and i think if you went through and started to scale up the relation of the eyes to the rest of the face it would really help your characters a lot um like i said i think that there's a lot of really really good stuff on all of the characters in terms of like the the skin looks pretty good the textures look pretty good there's high frequency detail um but right now the eyes are feeling too small in relation to everything else especially with a female character the eyes are going to be kind of like a little bit bigger that's usually um something that happens is th their skulls may be a little bit smaller in size compared to uh compared to the size of the, the human eye which the human eye doesn't grow so they tend to have a little bit more of like kind of bigger eye eyes to the face um so enhancing those i think would help this character 
uh, a lot because right now they're they're just a little bit too small and so you can notice uh, unfortunately I'm not good at drawing on the screen but um, a good way to kind of determine the size of the eyes is this corner of the nose if you draw a straight line up is where you should have this corner of the eye so um, that that's kind of just a dead giveaway that they are just a little bit too small and then if you start here from the bottom of the lip and just draw the line through yeah you're pretty good on that side um, but I would just pull these in a little bit more and I think that that would help in you know selling the look of the characters and I think that's a pretty common thing with most of them um another another big thing that i would uh suggest is this banner i would i would make a fix to it um to get it to work proportionally because right now all of it's just stretched stretched obviously um and it, it doesn't it doesn't really present itself in the best light um overall you have some really good uh textures and some good shading and things like that you have a lot of that technical aspect down um, I would just focus a little bit more on like the structure of the skull and just proportions of the face um, to kind of bring it a little bit more to that realistic, uh, that side of realism. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I just didn't know where to post the link. Oh, um, so I, I said this a little bit before. Um, we're not going to accept any more portfolios today, unfortunately, just because we I, I kind of have a lot to get through still. Um, but I will do this again. So for future reference, feel free to send it once I post that on my Instagram and <clears throat> I can take a look at those. Okay, cool. Cool, so yeah, this is uh, kind of a similar portfolio in nature. It looks like you really like um, faces and portrait work, which is good. You have a wide variety of stuff, female, uh, Native American. Um, yeah, some really good stuff. So right off the bat, I, I would say your, your strongest character is probably this one and these two. Or I think that this one's new. I don't think, it, oh yeah, six hours ago. Nice. Yeah, this looks really good. This is uh, definitely a good start. This render, um, I, I might enhance just this side lighting a little bit more um, just to bring out the brightness of this side of the face. But overall, uh, really, yeah, this looks good. This looks awesome. The materials look really good. Um, skin looks good. Model looks good. Yeah, this is a really nice render. There's a lot of really good stuff about it. You know, the inside of this, like, uh, I don't know what you would call this crown looking thing um feels like velvet or something which is cool um these materials look good I, you might be able to enhance the or reduce the roughness on like the trim just to to make that gold gold rimming pop a little bit more uh might be cool but awesome yeah this this is a good work there's a lot of different lighting and stuff nice turnaround Might be able to slow this <clears throat> down just a little bit, um, just so I can get a little bit better views on everything. Uh, but yeah, overall, yeah, this is a really nice piece. So nice job with this one. <clears throat> if I was to offer some feedback about this piece, uh, the only thing I would really say is maybe just working on the roughness values of the face. Um, right now, it feels like everything is of the same roughness value, so you don't have any of that like reflection uh, coming off the nose where all the oils kind of reside in this T-zone area. So uh, that's the only thing I would really address for this this piece, um, but overall looks really good, so nice job with that. <clears throat> um, okay, cool. Yeah, this is also a good piece uh, done for, done based on the bad traveling uh, short, which was really cool. <clears throat> cool, yeah, this is a good one uh, for feedback the only thing that i would recommend is maybe just like a a little bit of a reduction on the lighting so right now everything's kind of hit by the same sort of light and because of that um uh, you're getting a lot of this red glow in the crevices because of the subsurface scattering so either reducing the subsurface scattering a little bit just to to reduce how much that terminator is causing the red bleed um, or just turning down the light a little bit, you might be able to find that you uh, get a little bit less of that scattering. But yeah, overall, this is a good, good, uh, looks good. Textures look pretty good. Um, eyes look good. 
yeah, and like I said, I think this uh, this man with the smile is is a good one. Um, some good lighting, interesting lighting. Yep, nice job with this one. Uh, the, so I'm familiar with portrait lighting that looks like this. Again, I'm not a huge fan of it. I do it every once in a while um, just because I do think it can produce a good render, and here I think it produces a good render, but just maybe offsetting the light just a little bit so it's not 100% directly on the like front side of the face um and so we get a little bit of cast shadow from it but overall that's just kind of nitpicky thing this this piece looks really good so yeah i don't have too much to say with this uh the only thing that i would comment on is uh it's hard to gauge what field you want to go to i'm assuming it's more towards the visual effects range which if that's that's the case i think you're headed in the right direction i think there's a lot of good stuff maybe just provide a little bit more breakdown information on your characters so wireframes um just some maybe you dim sets if that's what you're using but overall uh definitely some good results there <clears throat> okay let me get another drink real quick okay so let's see will you work through the folios you've already sent or um, so every portfolio that was sent to me up till the point when the survey on my Instagram went down is, is what I have up. Um, there may be a couple that I missed. Some people sent them through messages, which I don't necessarily get all of my messages. Uh, if, if I don't follow someone or they don't follow me or things like that, it, it can get sent off to a, a restricted not restricted, but a, a section that um, I have to approve before I can respond to it. So some of those I may not see, have seen, um, but majority of them were here. So uh, next question, is likeness useful for the gaming industry? Um, that depends where you want to work. Uh, I would say to a certain capacity, yes, because I would kind of equate uh, likeness to matching the concept in general that you're given. Um, so you should be able to like, match a concept you don't necessarily need to be able to like sculpt one-to-one -one likeness for like i don't know ben affleck or someone like that um there you usually are given a little bit of direction as to someone that you're trying to kind of encapsulate but you usually focus more towards what the concept looks like obviously there's situations where they are going for photorealism and 100 percent likeness like uh callisto protocol for example they used a scan of the actor's head so you're not doing any likeness there you're you're kind of have a starting point but i i wouldn't say that you have to know how to do likeness it really just depends on the role that you're going after um i like to do likeness every once in a while so that was what i used to do uh, when I first started, I did a lot of portraits and a lot of, like, more likeness-type studies. Um, now I don't really do that. If you look at my personal work, none of my personal work is that that anymore, just because I kind of find uh, photorealism and, and likenesses to be a little bit more on the mechanical side and not as artistically exciting for me. Um, but in a game environment, it, it's not bad to know, but you don't necessarily have to know it so okay so here's paul's um right off the bat some some really cool like story presentation with all of these thumbnails it's that's really good to see you're kind of taking your your uh, characters to the next level which is good um one thing that i would mention it's a little bit hard to determine what you want to do there's a lot a lot of different things on here so some of this stuff looks like maybe like graphic stuff some of this looks like unreal environment renders um some some is just environment art and then there's also some of these like character sculpts so i would hone that down just a little bit and determine what you really want to do uh if you're trying to be a generalist in the game industry that isn't really much of a thing in my experience i don't really know anyone who acts as a generalist unless you work at like maybe an indie studio um but i i would i would really pick what you like and kind of stick with that um in terms of quality overall yeah there's some really good quality in here i think your environment stuff is is all really really cool looking um especially the stuff that's in unreal so yeah this is some good stuff okay recreate 
the truth is. So, okay, so one thing I would mention um, just on the environment front is I would clarify what you did uh, because right now it says recreated in UE in UE5. What? How did you recreate it? Did you like s- take a scan of this stuff and then put it in there and then light it? Um, just knowing that stuff can be really beneficial as a recruiter or as someone reviewing your portfolio because then I know what you are responsible for. Whereas, like in my mind, I view this image and go, "Oh, well, he made everything in this image." which that may not necessarily be the case. So I I would um, suggest putting that into your description as to what you were responsible for because right now I'm I'm getting a little bit of mixed message from this and the quality of this and how good this looks to like your character stuff where it, it's it's um missing some of that that bar. So that's that's one thing that I would recommend is really be transparent about what you contributed to a project, what's made of scans, what's uh, what was done by you, um, because that that can really help inform whether you get an interview or not. Um, in terms of your characters, let's take a look at your other one too. Huh, cool. Um, cool. Um, so for both of these pieces, these character pieces, uh, the one thing I would recommend is just refining your anatomy a little bit more. Um, and, and this, the, usually the biggest indicator for this is the neck area. Um, there is a, an underlying structure to the neck that exists and when you don't have it you get this kind of like tapered fall off into the shoulders um that doesn't really match what a neck looks like this is something that stands out to me whenever i view people's art is is there an actual neck to the character or is it just kind of this taper off into the shoulders so i i would suggest uh refining that a little bit more and the other thing with this character and your other character is um, just work a little bit more on your forms, uh, your primary and secondary forms. The, a lot of this stuff feels a little bit more clay-like than it should. You want to resolve those shapes like this triangle. You want it to be smooth and you want it to transition to the next form um, well. And right now you're kind of losing some of those shapes with just kind of like this this blobby uh, clay feel that it has right now. Um, so that's what I would recommend for that. This is a cool piece. I, I looked at this one earlier. Nice presentation, so an interesting storytelling, uh, some more nice rendering presentation. Yeah, this is a cool piece. This is a good one. Um, definitely keep this one in here. So yeah, hopefully that, that provides some insight to this one. Um, I would just clarify what you did, um, and really narrow down what you want to do and, and present that picture. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, Erica wants to be a 3D artist. Cool. Yeah, th- there's not, um, you don't have a ton of pieces, which is not necessarily a bad thing. That's something to keep in mind when uh, making your portfolio. A lot of times it isn't about the quantity of pieces that you have. A lot of times that can kind of be to your detriment if all of the pieces aren't to the same quality bar. Um, and both of these right off the bat look good. This looks like a good 3D model of a truck cool i mean for this piece you might be able to present uh have a little bit of of a better presentation on lighting but that's just kind of nitpicking i get the idea of what it is um it looks like a truck so i I think it looks good um this one cool yeah showing me the the model has textures on it um i would provide a little bit more information about this piece uh in terms of like maybe textures and things like that um for this piece, one thing I would suggest, and I mostly notice it like in the gray render, and and this this is a, kind of a dead giveaway that something is made out of 3D is the perfection of edges. If you look at all of these wood blocks, 
all of them look like they have pristine, sharp line edge quality. So when you have something like that, it doesn't, things like that don't really exist in the real world. Perfection doesn't exist. If you look at my, my desk that I'm working at, there is rounded edges to it. There is chips in it. There are corners that are more rounded than others. So adding in a little bit of that nuance to your hard edges throughout this entire model, I think would really help. Adding some like irregularities to a surface really helps to start, make something a lot more believable. Um, so like you, you kind of have feints of it with like these pieces of wood right here where it's, it's tilted up, add in a little bit of wobbliness to those lines and it can, you know, really enhance your props a little bit more. So, so yeah, overall nice stuff, uh, Erica. Um, I think these are both good, just a little bit of information on how to, you know, push the piece a little bit further. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, I'm just going to grab a drink real quick. Okay, so one question we just got. Um, how much knowledge of anatomy is required as a junior character artist? <clears throat> so that's a tricky question. Uh, knowledge of anatomy and being able to sculpt anatomy don't necessarily equate to one another. I know people that have great knowledge of anatomy, Um but they can't sculpt it very well. So I would say being able to know where muscles are, where their insertion points are, where are your bony landmarks so that you can always have those insertion points and connection points of a muscle uh, feel believable is something that you should know. Um, but I can tell you, I don't know what the seventh vertebrae on my back is called i don't know what every single muscle in my forearm is called but i know how they work and where they connect to and how they sit on top of each other enough to replicate that in a sculpt so i would say if you can replicate it in a sculpt and it looks believable then then you're fine um but the the difficult part is making believable anatomy. That's really the hard part because I've seen people, and I used to um, do the same thing, but I've seen a lot of people that they sculpt the anatomy and they kind of create that hero uh, bodysuit look where it's like all of the muscles are just stamped onto the body. And that's just because you can carve in where the muscle is doesn't necessarily equate to it looking good so that's um something that i would keep in mind for like uh, just to look at some anatomy real quick um, let's see let's see if i can see some good ones i mean there's a lot of good ones i guess i probably shouldn't go here because there is uh nudity so we're, we're gonna skip off of that one but we'll we'll come to this one so um here's here's a actually a very good example of anatomy um obviously it's a foot but you have some really distinct shapes um and and although there's like a lot of exaggeration in like the forms and um just like these secondary forms that are in the feet i can tell that this person has an understanding of the anatomy of a foot and some of those rhythms and like flows of the lines that they should be capturing to make a foot okay so um okay so back to portfolio um cool so 3d artist so uh, again this is something that i would clarify in everyone's just be careful what you put here if you put you want to be a 3d artist well right now i see this and i think character artist and not 3d artist so just make sure that your messaging and your portfolio is clear okay so we'll click on click on uh, Jonathan Banks here. Um, I am actually from Albuquerque, New Mexico, where Breaking Bad takes place, and so I'm I'm a massive Breaking Bad fan. So I always like to see people's renditions of the characters. So got to click on this one first. Um, cool. So right right off the bat, I think uh, there's just a couple of things that could use some tweaking with this one on these images there is a lot of dead space so you have two-thirds of the render of this image uh, taking up nothing so when you're doing your final renders think about that space and how you want to maximize it i i'm not concerned about what's over here to the left i'm not concerned about what's over here to the right i'm concerned about the face so by doing a crop i could eliminate most of that information to 
one third and I'm not wasting space in my renders. So that's something I would just everyone I think should keep in mind when doing their renders is think about all that dead space. Okay. Um, for this piece, uh, lighting could use a little bit of love. Um, the skin looks pretty good. I think that there is a little bit more of a vacant expression to him um, that you might be able to refine just a little bit more. There's a lot of nice detail in the skin, but you are losing some of the like roughness in the T-zone uh, because of the lighting. So you have some nice like rim light coming in to, to inform some of the forms back here. I would just try and inform that same kind of information in this T-zone as well. Okay... Oh, this is cool. This is this is good information to see and to present how you're breaking it down. So that's cool. Um, for this piece, also uh, kind of the same thing that I said with Mike. Right now, uh, this render is feeling very blown out. There's there's a lot of white going on, and it's kind of all fading into the same value range. So I would be careful with that, with like using this bright background and this bright lighting setup. Um, some good details in here. Uh, some of your materials could use a little bit of work, like this cloth. Um, it, it feels flat, so it needs probably just like a little bit of an addition of fuzz. Same with, uh, I think this is meant to be cloth down here as well, um, in like these pieces. That would really help to differentiate like this cloth from the leather. Um, let's see. Some tattoos, which is cool. Cool. Yeah, so I think overall with your portfolio uh, moving forward, I would just try to work a little bit more on your lighting. Um, and even up top with this render, you have, in this render as well, uh, you have just kind of a full face direct lighting. Um, it it helps sell your forms. You, you put some time into sculpting your forms. So make sure that your lighting kind of emphasizes those volumes and makes it, it gives a little bit more of an informative nature to the viewer. So let's go to the next one. Oh yeah, cool. I remember looking at this portfolio. Yeah, over uh, right off the bat, um, this this is a cool portfolio. A lot of really cool like poppy pieces uh, that looks they all look really interesting. Um, so one thing to note with these characters, which I I've kind of continued to make a point of this in my feedback, is material definition. For pieces like these, it's a little bit different because of the stylized nature of it, um, but I do think that's something that to keep in mind and something that you can play with is playing with like your material definitions on these jackets, um, this like leather shoulder piece, some of these extra bits, even like the metalness on these, I think can really help the piece uh, just a little bit by adding some of that like pop of reflections. It doesn't have to look exactly like a real world metal but enough so that you can kind of have an informed decision of what it, what it's meant to be would be something cool that you might want to try out. Um, oh, okay, yeah. So this this was something too that uh, I noticed when I clicked, op uh, clicked open your portfolio is you have a lot of work. Um, you have a lot of work in different categories. Uh, I know I keep saying it, but I think uh, just narrowing down what you want to do would be really helpful. Um, I think that all of your characters have a very distinct style to them, and they all lend themselves to something like Overwatch or uh, things like that. But with your environments, you kind of have a range of envir environments of, like, r they're all realistic. So just kind of... I would say decide what you want to do. Um, but overall, all of the quality is really good. I, I I don't think that there's anything wrong with your quality. Um, but I think you're at a point where you could kind of hone down what you want to do. Um, cool. Yeah, the, this is all really good. This is all good presentation, good information, showing a wireframe, um, the turnaround. Cool. Yeah, this is this is a cool piece. Really simple, fun, and easy. Some close-up shots. 
yeah, this is this is a nice piece. I really like this. Good pose on your characters. All your characters are posed, which is really nice. Nice turntable. Another pose. Another pose. Yeah, the, these are all really good, man. Um, this is all really good stuff. Breakdown of your wireframe. I did take a look at this one earlier. And this, again, this is just nitpicky. Uh, but I would keep in mind your... Um, density of your polygons uh you you're you have a really high density in this kind of like hand garment that doesn't necessarily match what you have throughout um obviously there are going to be areas like the face and even like the knuckles of the hands and hands in general that have um higher density just because of the deformation in the area but there is a pretty substantial difference between the hands and like the rest of the model so i would just keep that in mind again a little bit nitpicky it's not a huge deal but just something that i noticed um yeah overall really good stuff in this one um i, I think all of the work is exceptional so if, if anyone's watching and they, they're interested in stylized stuff i think you could definitely check out this portfolio and this is all some really really cool pieces and got a lot of good stuff showing your stuff in a in a final moving environment yeah awesome stuff i don't have a ton to say about this one um i think that this is really good stuff for what you have in here cool yeah really the biggest thing is um you just have a lot of props and environments in it i would just whittle it down to determine where you want to go at this point what you want to work on and really just go full send into that Okay, let's see. So I had a couple questions before we move forward. Uh, not related to the topic of the live stream, but if possible, could you make a video on skin and substance 3D uh, when you don't have a high resolution sculpt? Um, I mean, why you only have a normal map and don't want to... Uh, I usually create makeshift models, so I don't have time to sculpt that. Um, so, okay, so let me read this again. Uh, topic of the live stream. Um, so I'm not entirely sure if I understand the question, um, but uh, so when you only have a normal map and you don't want to sculpt a high res model. Um, so I mean, I, do you, if you mean like um, you don't have a high res model, so you don't have all the poor detail, I don't necessarily have a great way to go about about doing that um i mean you can do things like tiling detail in the engine um you can use some of the skin that is in marmoset and paint out a mask for where to localize that skin detail uh not having high frequency detail in the sculpt i mean i i guess i yeah let, i'll put that on the back burner i'll throw that on the list of things that i could show off in the future um so yeah I, I know that that wasn't really probably the best answer but hopefully um you know kind of helpful okay this next one um so uh, right off the bat there's not really uh, a ton that i feel like i can say about this one obviously you're a character artist uh, at rorty digital um and you worked on horizon so i mean that that i think kind of speaks for itself um i, I was a fan of the the monsters from horizon all this stuff is really cool so good stuff to see um let's see yeah really cool stuff um in terms of the characters um good stuff yep and captured the likeness know exactly who it is hair looks good skin looks good uh material looks good yeah it's cool to see the the, the information you put out uh, topology looks good yeah I, I probably don't have a ton to put on to this portfolio I mean I think that this is a good portfolio I think at this point just adding more characters will just help you out a little bit um, from the perspective of um, just how many characters you have in your portfolio I think that they're all good quality um, obviously you have professional work in there as well so that's 
yeah, I think you're definitely very hireable. As you know, you already have a job doing this, so um, UVs look good. Yeah, all this stuff is good. I think that um, just more characters, you know, as, as you continue on your career, you're going to have more characters. You might be able to um, do a little bit of revision on the lighting, just kind of adding in some rim lights to this final render would be good. Um, with, with So I've, I've talked a lot about lighting so far, and with this character i think that this is a good example of you don't necessarily have to do like a, a harsh three-point lighting to sell some of the forms with with a female figure um softer lighting is usually good because you're trying to hide some of those like forms and wrinkles you know that's just what's been established long ago uh whether you agree with it or not but um the, yeah this is a good lighting setup i think just adding in like a rim light to accentuate and pop it from the background would be good this is a good good little shot too yeah overall really good stuff um i don't have a ton to say i'd i'd be interested to see what your next characters are so okay cool okay let's see um Okay, so one of the other is it possible to uh, okay, so um, portfolios we are closed off for portfolios for the review right now. Um, take a look, you know, in the future, and I should hopefully do this again. Um, so I mean, making skin textures and substance without high res sculpt. Um, so yeah, I I can see if I can put together a, a video on that. So. Um, do you mean with focusing that one should focus more on having consistent style or one should focus on specific area? One does like, for example, doing characters or hard service. Um, I mean focusing specifically on characters. Uh, so, for example, if you like environments and you like characters, um, choose which one you really want to focus on in the long run and, and make that where you put your time and your effort. Um, cause with, with characters, it, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Don't spread yourself too thin and really just kind of hone in on doing one or the other characters or environments or hard surface and run with that. Okay. So let's see what we have here. Cool. Cool to see the rig, some nice sculpting some exaggerated forms cool okay so with this piece um i think overall there's a lot of really good stuff about it i think right your your focus is um more towards the stylized hand painted look um which if that's the case i would push your hand painted look just a little bit more um it, it feels like it's more at a block out stage with just simplified colors and it's kind of missing where some of that lighting and shadowing should be coming from in a hand painted style. Um, I noticed that you are getting actual lighting information, which is cool. Um, but I think you're you're missing some of that quality in the textures. Your metals look really good. Your metals have that quality of the hand painted look. Um, but like the skin and the cloth and the legs kind of feel like they're missing it. And then the other big thing is uh, right here you have clipping. So uh, that's something you just want to make sure that you're careful of. It may not seem like a big deal, or you may think like, oh, no one's going to notice, but that was one of the first things that caught my eye was just that clipping right there. So just keep an eye for that. Um, okay, cool. Um, so for this one, uh, personal project, uh, Okay, cool. So for this one, uh, one thing I would maybe focus on a little bit more is just some of your proportions. For this shot in particular, the head looks uh, rather small in relation to the rest of the body. Um, might be able to scale that up just a little bit. Um, and in, it also, again, harping back to the presentation, I think that that's a big one with this one. It all feels very flat. It feels like it's kind of lacking lighting. Um, this one has it, but it's all just an overall like red tone that um, is kind of just enhances the fact that the skin is more of a red tone. So it's just a lot of red on red. Um, so let's see. So, okay, we'll go to this next one. Okay. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, this is a this is a nice likeness. Yeah, this is really good. Nice to see the wireframe, the breakdown and stuff. Yeah, this is a really good likeness. Uh, overall, the materials look pretty good. Um, you might be able to add a little bit more to the jacket to kind of sell the feel of fabric. Um, your leathers looks pretty good. You might want, and, and this is this is kind of a stylistic choice, um, but I would check the PBR values of your collar and the black lipstick. Um, they might be peeking into unrealistic PBR values. And again, this is this is more of a stylistic choice, but you know, um, it does feel super dark. So you might be able to bring it up just a little bit in terms of value. Uh, but yeah, overall, really cool piece. This looks really good. So nice job with that one. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there is uh, a very big gap uh, in quality between this one and this one. Um, and because of that, I, you might be able to remove this one, these three portraits, um, because this one is substantially better than these three. So because of that, it's kind of pulling the quality bar. It's kind of making me question like, oh, was this based off of a scan? Um, or or what because the the quality of this one is is very good so um you might want to evaluate these two you might want to bring these two up to the quality of this one um and that would definitely help the situation uh but right now there there's a a gap between these and this one's a lot better so to reduce me or a recruiter from having any questions either bring this piece up to this quality or take these ones out um in terms of the anatomy study okay looks cool wireframe wireframe okay cool so in terms of the anatomy study um there's some definitely some good stuff going on here I think uh, the the biggest critique that I would have in terms of the quality is um, nothing is super harshly defined. Everything kind of feels at the same level of volume underneath the surface. Um, so maybe just giving an additional layer of like the forms that need to be etched in so that things kind of pop uh, might help. But overall, uh, you know, it looks like you have an understanding of anatomy and where things go. Um, which is good and then this equiche model same thing this is this is a good thing to see um, you're practicing anatomy uh, cool so one way to potentially enhance this equiche model um, if you were to do like a future study is I would separate out the meshes and work on where they insert and attach to um, just so that you have a little bit more of an understanding and you can start to play with some of the layering of the muscles so that you aren't getting like just harsh cut ins of where the muscle exists so like right now your abs are just harshly cut in your pecs are cut in and um like these the bands across your legs are drawn in uh it, it just might help with the layering quality of um how the anatomy looks so Okay, so on to the next one. We got a couple more. Um, I will say I'm definitely losing steam, but uh, if I sound harsh or anything like that, I do apologize. It's just, it's been almost two hours of talking, so. But that being said, um, we're going to try and get this stuff through and finished. Um, so with this stuff, there's, I remember looking at this portfolio, um, some good stuff in here. I think that the biggest thing I've iterated on with a lot of people is it's hard to gauge what you want to do. Um, there's material balls, there's pokeballs, there's stylized characters, there's for Horizon Forbidden West uh, fan art, um, there's concept art. I would remove majority of what you have in here uh, and whittle down to be characters, to be concept art, really figure out what exactly you want to do and remove the fat essentially um, because it's not really adding much to your portfolio it's detracting from it uh, more than it is adding to it um, your material balls I will say look look cool they're they're interesting looking um, you know these draw my attention 
<clears throat> um, let's see. So I'll just do the character modeling. Um, for this Horizon one, let's take a look. Cool, definitely in that same style as Horizon. Um, I think the biggest thing that stands out to me on this character is maybe just a revision on the anatomy. Um, he feels very like thin, long torso, so the proportions on the torso don't necessarily match up. And because the torso is so long, his legs start to feel a little bit stumpy. Um, good breakdown here, her textures, you can see the model. Um, there is this line of symmetry uh, that, that kind of pops out to me right away. Be careful with that in areas like this. Um, you know, that, that'll draw the viewer's eye with how symmetrical it is. Okay. I mean, overall, the rendering and presentation for this one looks pretty good. The lighting and stuff is cool. Um, it, it looks like it was made in the same rendering environment as what they did for the game. So good job with that. The textures are, are looking good. Um, the paint and stuff on the mask and the wood and the metal and stuff looks cool. So good job with that. Um, so these ZBrush sculpts, like I've mentioned before, um, take them to the next level. I, I, I think just a, a basic ZBrush sculpt is doesn't help the portfolio too much. So um, thumbnails on all of these uh, up to probably this point. Um, I think could use a little bit of tweaking. You start to zoom in on these wider ones. There's not enough information in these thumbnails to really like draw my eye. Um, do like a, a portrait shot of the head so that you can, so I can get an idea from this perspective. Do I want to click on this? Do I not want to click on it? Whereas like right now, because it's so zoomed out, I, I have an idea what it is, but I'm like, there's nothing really drawing me to click on it. So I think that that's really helpful, which, you know, that being said, it looks like on these last couple, you kind of done that. So, um, so yeah, overall, good job on this one. Uh, just really kind of hone down what you want to do, um, work on your anatomy a little bit for these more realistic looking ones. Um, there's a lot of good stuff in here. The textures and materials look good, but just, just chisel those things down and I think you'll be in a good spot. Okay. Let's see, so so it looks like we got some likeness in here. Speed sculpt. Cool, we'll take a look at this one. This one looks good. Cool, this beard looks good. Yeah, this is this nice looking beard. Materials look pretty good. I do think you could um, work a little bit more on the lighting. Right now it looks like it's just being lit by the HDRI. Um, so I, I would get like a secondary light source in here to start casting some more shadows for you um, and, and maybe tone down the background to, to not take as much attention away. Um, so yeah, right now the, the lighting just feels flat and it's not really helping your materials as much as it could. Um, but overall, this is a good quality character. Uh, the hair looks good. Textures look good and good to see this stuff. Cool. Yeah, this, this is a good looking piece. Um, like I said, I think that the lighting could just use a little bit more love to, to kind of push it a little bit further, um, which looks like a, a common theme between these three portraits. Um, just going to be lighting. These eyes do look a little bit big uh, in terms of like the, the iris size. They might be a little bit too big, so I would I would check that against some proportions um, just to see if you can maybe scale those down just a little bit. Sculpt looks good. This is a good looking sculpt. X Gen guides, cool. Yeah, another good character, um, a lot of good stuff. The skin texturing and shading looks good. The hair looks good in terms of shading. Um, like I said, I think the eyes could just use a little bit of work. Uh, they do kind of feel like maybe they're missing an element of like parallax occlusion or like the refraction that should be going on on the iris. And the reason I say that is because it kind of like feels like maybe they're a little bit bulging. Um, so if that's the case, I would just put a little bit more work into your eye shader just to capture that look. Um, and it, it definitely could help a little bit. Um, okay, let's look at the monster. Cool. I think that there's uh, definitely some good material reads in here. Good to see the turnaround and wireframe. Clay. Cool. 
yeah, a lot of good stuff here. The only thing that I would recommend for this um, this post is I would add uh, bigger images um, so that it's not just these three turnarounds. I would add like a bigger image so that I could see a lot of these details and a little bit closer up. Um, and I think that that would help this piece. So, okay, let's see. So on to the next one. Okay, cool. Um, so looks like a lot of interest in portrait work. Cool. We'll click on your latest one. Nice. Yeah, there's some really good materials in this one. The hair looks really good. Skin looks good. Metals are looking good. Leather's looking good. Alpedo looks good. This is a nice render in context of a scene. This is cool. This looks good. Yeah, this is a really good uh, presentation and render. A lot of good stuff in here. Um, good to see the, the turnaround. Sculpt looks good. Yeah, this is a good one. The, the macro shot that everyone has. Cool. Yeah, there's definitely a lot. Oh, this is a good shot. This is really nice. Um, yeah, the eye looks really good. Yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff in, in these renders, so nice job with this one. You, you definitely um, set the bar really high for what you did. So uh, overall, yeah, I think that this is a really good render. Um, not, not too much that I feel like I could say about it. Um, maybe just in the this shot, you might be able to brighten up the focal point of the face just a little bit more with a light. Um, everything else is a little bit more dark, but even the face kind of feels like it's a little bit more in a darker value range. So just kind of accentuating the face with light a little bit more, I think, would help with this piece. Let's look at this one. Yeah, materials on these guys are all looking really good. So his skin does look a little bit waxy, um, so I would I would just be careful with that. Breakdown information, cool. Yeah, all this stuff is really good to see. It shows that you know what you're doing, you know how to use the software and get a good result. Okay, so this piece um, I think so far is uh, probably your weakest in terms of just the overall character, not necessarily the quality of how stuff is done. Um, you know, all of this detail is all really good and um, mostly I think where it starts to kind of break down is in the hand and the forms. Um, you kind of have a noodly arm right here and then the hand doesn't feel like it has uh any forms to it so i would say if you could if you go back to this piece um i would just uh kind of enhance this silhouette a little bit better and revise the hands just a little bit more this piece is from three years ago so you might be at a point where if you wanted to you could take it out of your portfolio and i don't think you would necessarily be missing anything especially uh with the quality of this piece this is this is a really good quality piece and i think that this piece kind of just brings it down a little bit so um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Okay, another prop piece. Let's see what we have here. So this is the most recent one. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff in here. Cool. Well, I think right off the bat, this this portfolio, if you're aiming to do weapons, is uh, if that's kind of what it's informing me of. So if that's the case, good job with that. Um, in terms of things that you might be able to, to work a little bit more on, um, probably just texturing a little bit. Right now, a lot of your materials, they feel kind of like right off the factory shelf, like nothing's ever touched them before. Um so I would I would do a little bit of tweaks and revisions to that. I would start to add in like for the sh shotgun, for example, some of the wear on the edge of the gun, where like over time you've set it down, it's drug across the concrete and the floor. Um, some of these metals where you're going to start to have some edge wear where it's like dinged things and hit edges, 
where your hand goes on the shotgun um, loading mechanism, you know, oils and, and wear and things like that start to happen. So I, I would just try and work on taking your textures to the next level. Um, and that I think that that's kind of a common theme uh, throughout. Overall, the models look pretty good, um, have a lot of different variety in here. Cool. Yeah, so I think overall headed in the right direction. You have a lot of stuff to look at. Um, I think you could just use a little bit of help on the texturing front. Just really starting to sell the materials, uh, start to think about the storytelling element of them in how they've existed in the real world, where dust's going to collect, where things start to get damaged, and so on and so forth. Okay so far where did, okay so uh one question where did you announce this so people know where to submit portfolios so um i announced this on my instagram uh a couple of days ago like two days ago maybe it was yesterday i don't remember uh it might have been yesterday all the days kind of blur together um but yeah so if you follow me on instagram i i try to be pretty active on there about things uh when i release videos and um, that's where I announced that I was going to do this. So just keep an eye there. Um, if you don't follow me already, you can you can go ahead and follow me, which, again, is always greatly appreciated. <clears throat> and that's where I went ahead and announced it. Um, so just keep an eye out for the future. I have a couple of other things planned, some, some videos in the works that I'm hoping to get done here fairly soon. Um, a new piece coming out. So that's where I'll announce all of that stuff. So, um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, beginner 3D artist specializing on creatures and wildlife. Okay, cool. Um, so that being said, let's look at this one. Okay, so so this piece, uh, because of what your title says, I would remove this piece. It's It doesn't really add much to the fact that you want to do creatures and wildlife. Um, it's You may like it. It may have been something that you did. What I'm guessing for was this scene. Uh, I would potentially combine those two posts and I would put that information into the shots for this one. So, um, okay, let's see. Okay, cool. So for these pieces, one thing uh, I would really suggest focusing on is um, there's this book, what is it called? Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, shoot, I may not have it. I don't know where it's at. Um, but I would invest in an anatomy book for animals um, just so that you can get a really good understanding of kind of the shapes that they have. Studying animals from like 2D images is kind of hard from like pictures that's captured. Um, so get, get an animal anatomy book that can really help you understand the structure and the muscle volumes that they have. A lot of those anatomy books, they also have, uh, like this kind of turnaround image and it really shows you where the forms exist underneath them. And you can really visualize how it affects the silhouette. Um, that's one thing that I would recommend, especially if you're wanting to do animal anatomy, uh, one really good sculptor is, let me see if I can remember if I think her name's Crystal uh, mm, I'm not gonna remember how to do it how to spell her name let me see if I can find man my terrible spelling is on full display right now okay see okay well obviously you can see a lot of great stuff oh yeah here's crystal's work um so uh, i know that crystal has a sculpting demo on z from like one of the zbrush summits um so i would take a look at that um but yeah she has a lot of really really cool work for animal anatomy and and just kind of different sculpts that she's done and use those to get kind of like a jumping off point and an understanding of like the forms and the volumes right now with with the um, sculpt that you have presented here a lot of the volumes don't feel like they have too much volume to to them as as much as they're like kind of just carved in 
start to think about how those muscles and those volumes overlay on top of each other and uh you you can really see some of that stuff illustrated in her work so she's a great resource to to learn from um so yeah if you want to do animal and creature anatomy uh having a really good understanding of the anatomy of animals is going to help you inform your creatures so definitely continue to just refine that um a little bit more and i think you'll be in a good spot okay so we got two more okay cool Cool, cool. Okay. Nice to see your texture in the viewport. Cool. Yeah, overall, I think that this is a good piece. Um, definitely a lot of good stuff. These eyes look cool. Uh, really, really well shaded. Um, the only thing that I would suggest for this piece is, again, I, I've kind of hit on this with most people, is just uh, in introducing a little bit more light onto the character, into this face, face region. Right now, the belly is where it's receiving most of the light, and the belly is an interesting fact of the character, but the face is going to be what's most important. So really try to emphasize this area and draw my, draw my attention up here. Um, in terms of the sculpt, I think that there's a lot of good with the sculpt. I do think that the face forms feel a little bit noisy. Um, you're kind of losing some of the structure that should exist underneath it between like this uh, where the, the cheekbone is and then you kind of have these really big prominent eye bags that are very like voluminous. Um, so you could probably reduce those just a little bit so they're not making as much of an impact and maybe reduce some of these like stretch wrinkles that you have through the cheek area and some of just this extra visual noise and I think it would help the the face overall so let's see okay Yeah, this, this uh, level of detail, um, like the skin sculpting looks good. Nice job with that. Nice to see this breakdown. I would pre pre uh, present the wireframe maybe just a little bit differently. I'm not a huge fan of just grabbing a screenshot in Maya and presenting it that way. Um, if you're rendering, like this I think is a good one. Uh, so I would, I would probably drop this one. Um, it, it's not really adding much and it's kind of redundant to what I'm seeing here. This is good to see. Okay, let's see. Lego. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so one thing um, that I noticed with this portfolio, I think that this is, it's not a huge deal. There's a lot of artists that do this. Um, but if your primary focus is games, doing your render renders in something like Arnold, it's not going to be applicable to a position as a game character artist. Um, so just know that when you're when you're putting up stuff on your portfolio in terms of it being from Arnold, it's best to see the stuff that you have here that's meant for real time. So just keep that stuff in mind. Um, Okay, cool. Let's see. Yeah, it's cool to see that you have like rigs for all of these characters. This is not something that I do. Um, it, it definitely does take your character a little bit further in terms of quality uh, by showing that you you know want to put in the effort to rig your character and give it a pose. So that's always good to see. Some animation on it, some turnarounds. Cool. Cool, yeah, some, some good stuff. This stuff's interesting. Um, I definitely think that this is your strongest piece right here. Um, for these two, looking at them, you might be able to do a little bit of revision just on your material response for your characters, um, especially this one. It feels very glossy, and there's not a lot of uh, information breaking up the surface, especially like right here. Um, so you might be able to adjust that which okay so this i could be wrong okay so i also am kind of led to believe that you 
might have your normal map inverted on this character. Um, the reason for that is if you look like down here, the way that the character is getting shaded, it kind of looks like the uh, the normal map might be flipped. So for future reference, that's something that I would just double check when you're doing your renderings just to make sure that your normal map's uh, facing the right direction. Um, but yeah, so I would I would work on just material responses a little bit better, really emphasize the the uh, metals that these are supposed to be, and then like kind of this skin texture, you could break it up just a little bit more so it's not quite as glossy and waxy feeling. Um, but yeah, overall, definitely improvement uh, from in this piece um, headed in the right direction. So <sighs> okay, on to the last one. Okay, cool. Okay, so right off the bat, again, this is just going to kind of harp on what I've been iterating this whole time. Um, I would just give another pass to the lighting. Right now, uh, the character is fully lit from the front side, so there's not really much informing the volumes or the forms of the character, and you're not getting a super good read on your materials because of the lighting. So um, just getting in there, adding a nice rim light and uh, a point light and just a fill light, and it's really going to help you pop off with this leather material. Hopefully you can start to separate them some a little bit. Um, and give yourself some shadowing on your face to help inform what the sculpt looks like. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so with this piece, um, I think the biggest thing that could help this piece a little bit further is just going to be your materials. Um, right now the pants are lacking that cloth feel so the way that you would do that is by uh in the shader um, which is something i probably should have mentioned a, a little while back texturing for characters really goes hand in hand with shading it's two things that although you may be able to texture the character doesn't necessarily mean in the final engine your character is going to look um, like the material that you're nece necessarily trying to represent right off the bat um, some of that comes into play with things like look development. So that's something that you should really start to get comfortable with is working on look development and honing in your materials with the shaders. And that's really starts to help, uh, really helps to start creating believable materials. Um, so like for these pants right now, they, they feel, they don't have that like glow, that rim light on the edge that helps, you know, is the light catching the, the hairs from a glancing angle. Um, and I think that that would really help the overall look of the character. Um, so yeah, that's just a couple of things that I would recommend for this one. Uh, like I said, a lot of the stuff that I saw was kind of just the same things. Um, just continuing to refine material response, how your shaders are looking in a lighting, a lighting scenario, making sure that they look like the materials that they're supposed to capture. Um, that, that's a big one. And also just the overall presentation and lighting. Lighting is super, super important in presenting a character because if you don't present it in a good lighting scenario, then you end up with materials that fall flat, um, skin that falls flat, everything kind of starts to meld together. You're not really selling any of the forms that you sculpted. You're not really informing the uh, silhouette and the form of the character. So um, that's just something that I recommend for, you know, just everyone in general is, is really uh, continue just to refine your presentation and um, your lighting for your characters. And I think it'll help immensely in the final product. Um, but yeah, with that said, uh, I mean, we made it through everyone's portfolios after two hours and 15 minutes so uh to the 22 of you that are still here thank you for sticking around if you had um it, it was a lot of kind of just me talking so if if some of my uh feedback started to get a little bit redundant um i apologize but you know um usually the things that one person does wrong is kind of what majority of people tend to do wrong with their portfolios um but overall hopefully i you guys uh 
got some useful information out of this experience you know this was my first time doing this i look forward to hopefully doing more um if there's things that you know you you think i could improve on feel free to send me a message and let me know it's always always greatly appreciated I, i'm here to help you guys out and hopefully give you guys some insight into the world of a 3d artist and um hopefully how to get your foot in the door so um again thank you guys for just hanging out tuning in um you know, thank you guys for the support as well. Uh, and again, hopefully you guys are able to get something, if not from your portfolio, but someone else's portfolio that you, you thought might be helpful. Um, let's see. It was very, let's, uh, is it all right to add references in the portfolio? Uh, is it all right to add references in the portfolio? Um, if you don't mind me asking, could you expand on that just a little bit for me? So, okay, so um, we, I'm not sure if that person's going to respond again, uh, but like I was saying, thank you guys again. Um, I think I'm going to call the stream here. I will plan something again for the future, maybe just a Q&A, uh, just to talk shop, who knows. Um, so keep your eyes out for that if you, oh, like mood boards you use. Uh, no, so I don't, I don't post any of my reference inside of my portfolio. Um, I have, uh, I use pure ref and I stick all of my reference in that document and I'm the only one that sees it. Uh, unless you're in a production setting, sometimes the concept artist will, will do, you know, make you one. Um, I do save like, uh, collections. Where, where are they? I have something saved. Uh, so I do have like folders like this that I have saved of, of stuff that I, like reference back to and I keep it categorized for for projects and things like that but um just kind of depends what you need but yeah you you don't necessarily need to show that stuff um at least in my opinion so um okay cool yeah so with that being said uh I'm gonna call it here thank you guys again um you know and if, if you have feedback feel free to reach out and let me know um but I appreciate you guys all taking the time to listen to me babble for the last two and a half hours uh so 